So welcome back to Rocker Racing Circuit for the 125s. Now we're going to have some Kawasaki Ninjas in here as well. As you can see, the grid is on the screen in front of us. We must keep our eyes on Callum Grieger, a Rory Skinner, Thomas Lodge, the front row for good, but we're already at under start as well. There's no way to go. It's a very quick light change there, Dennis, as we head down towards first corner. Rory Skinner gets that little 80cc bike off and almost alongside Max Alexander, but the Kawasaki's just squeezed the throttle a little bit longer. And through the first corner seat curves they go with the Formula 125 bikes trailing in the wake as they all go through Leslie's just now. Let's try and pick up a visual on the leader as the three ninjas make their way down. It's Alexander. Max Alexander hits the front as they come up towards the Arnold Clark chicane for the first time of asking. A little bit wayward through there was Max. But up the back straight towards Clark. Yeah, and it's cool. We've actually got four Kawasaki ninjas out of this one, Duncan, this weekend, which is pretty impressive. And uh, Ty McIntosh, one of the other guys getting uh, used to one of these bikes. He's looked back from Rory Skinner there on the GP80 bike and just hasn't got the speed that he needs to kind of keep up with the guys at the front but we've got Callum Grieger and Rory Skinner there and he's looking in the mix but the guys on the, on the 250s there you've got Max Alexander, Callum Grieger there in second place and in third place Thomas Lodge first visit here to Knockhill so picking up the track really well popped himself into second place here number one by Thomas Lodge but yeah the last thing we saw uh, Alexander and Grieger but it's nice to see a few more of these cows because they give us some cracking racing but look just off the back and forth We've got young Rory Skinner on his 80cc bike there. I, I, I mean, all these guys do as well. They like to overtake it every opportunity there. And Lodge was looking up the inside and towards the top of seat curve. But they also like to throw themselves at the scenery every now and again. <laughs> Obviously, young kids learn all the time. Look at Carl Green in towards Scott's McConnell. Nice manoeuvre. Using all the paint on the exit there as he runs in towards Butchers and chasing down his probably nemesis at the front there, Max Alexander, as he goes through the, the Arnold Clash again. A bit of a weird line there, I think. You probably know what's going to pick up. His front, uh, his front fair looked a bit loose as he went over the curb there. I don't know if it was just my eyes vibrating or his fearing, but uh, there's a little bit of pride and honour at stake here with Gregor and Alexander. Uh, they both want to win. Uh, nobody wants to get beaten by the other one on home turf for these guys. So Max Alexander with a little bit of the heads up now as they come in towards the hairpin, uh, leading on the number two bike as we disappear back into the mid pack. And see a couple of bikes going through the John R. Or the Arrow Clash. You came there. That was like Robin Lindsay was one of them. Yeah, and Jordan Gill, I think, being the, being the second. Again, these guys are in through class, but your race leads again come up off the staff finish rate. Max Alexander keeping the pace really fast, 101 at the sharp end there, uh, doing a really good job there. And then we've got Callum Green in second, then we've got the, the launch there in third place, but hanging in the background still, you've got to be impressed with young Rory Skinner, still running wet tyres. And obviously, this warmer temperature there, that's going to make them probably even worse. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he's now going to start feeling that front end moving around on that little GP80 bike and uh, hopefully that'll keep him nice and safe as well. Well, he's running lap times that are very compatible, but you see the front of Callum Grieger's bike, they're just vibrating as he goes over the crest of the Arnold Clark chicane there, but yeah, he's running lap times that are very compatible with the, the guys at the front, and he's so light, but he's such a nice little kid, really, Skinner. He uh, is the future of Scottish motor bike racing, uh, just behind the two guys ahead of him, really, Max Alexander, Callum Grieger, you always look for the next coming. Skinner is your man. As I was say, Max Alexander, very impressive because oh, he's boy, fast on the front. Duncan, but also keeping these laps consistent and he's actually pulling the biggest gap we've seen with these guys all weekend there he's got like what a second and a half there as he comes out of the hairpin up over the start finish straight doesn't sound a lot but it is a big gap there as we look at Jordan Gill and Robin Lindsay coming through the Arnold Clark chicane that's a very Jim Moody-esque helmet that Robin Lindsay's got isn't the pink helmet yeah just saying uh, the battle of the actual Formula 125s there Bethany Polanski got a better start than Asher Robson and uh, Bethany Polanski's picking up pace and having a good fight with Asher Robson out there in the race circuit yep good to see those guys uh, those girls getting on with things as they go around the circuit but but yeah, Callum Grieger's going to be scratching his head here thinking, how has Max Alexander got such a big gap? Where is Max Alexander? Oh, there, he just goes through short there. For a minute there, I thought we'd lost him, Dennis, as they go through the chicane up the back straight. A little look over the inside shoulder by Thomas Lodge there. This is the most we've ever seen Kawasaki spaced out at Knock Hill in the racing. They've always got glued together. They remind you, if you can remember back far enough, of an RDLC, the Yamaha, the Wrangler Pro-Am series, all going round together. The LCs are a big, massive herd of bikes going round the circuit. I'm not as old as you, don't come next then. Again, like I said, the, the Kawasaki, uh, for people who probably don't know, it's a four-stroke, 250 single-cylinder machine and uh, obviously slightly different to the two-strokes. But these guys do a good job there. And speaking to Thomas Lodge earlier on, he went to get to the 101s and if, if he did that he said that was his mission for a week and was to come here get into a 101 he's done that he's done a 101 six in this race alone there so he's going to be really happy with that kind of pace he's looking at the 69 machine there of Rory Skinner and uh, like I say young Rory novice rider but look how fast and smooth he is and, and the style of the kid as well you know he's looking pretty funky he uses all the curves as he goes through in towards butchers and again through the Arnold Clash again nice and smooth and, and carries that momentum I, I mean, I have to say for somebody that's 11 years old 
this is why you need young kids into racing as yeah. soon as possible. You know, they do this kind of thing in Spain with the, with the Spanish stuff, the CEV championships, uh, France, Italy. They all get the young kids on GP type bikes straight away. And that's what you need to kind of bring them through. And Rory Screen is definitely going to be a man to watch in the future. As Max Alexander has lost a little bit of time there to Calum Grigg. I think Calum's just got a bit between his teeth there and starting to close down as you come on to the start of finish. Day. This guy's going to go past Jordan Gill and Robin Lindsay as they go underneath the Beats and Build Supplies Bridge. Yeah, Rory Skinner's bike, which you say, it's an actual Grand Prix chassis with the ATCC engine put into it. So Max Alexander goes past Robin Lindsay and that Callum Grigg is going to have to do something here. But Max Alexander is just getting everything falling into place for him right now, isn't he? He really is. He's, he's riding so well, Dennis. He's getting all his apexes, he's carrying huge amounts of corner speed, which you have to in these bikes, but he's also, sorry, he's also getting past the back markers when he needs to. Yeah, but you see how much he's getting his head tucked in there, but that chin is on the tank there, Duncan. He's flat as he possibly can, but he's tucked in as much as he possibly can out there in the race circuit, and he's making it hard for Callum. Callum's riding the wheels off the things all the lap times have been a lot faster than we've seen from these guys at any other meeting across the, the start of the season there. And you've got to be impressed with Thomas Lodge in his first outing there. He's doing a good job as well here at Knock Hill. And lap time wise is really good, but the main men at the front, normally these are overtaking every other corner out of the race circuit, but they're kind of holding station out there at the moment. Maybe just need a little bit more traffic to make it a little bit more interesting and close them up again once more. He's very aerodynamic, Max Alexander. He's got that kind of long back, which they, they look for in the Grand Prix and on the little uh, 125s and the Moto, Moto 3 bikes. Tucked in, you, can't, you, you can see everything's tucked in there, and there's acceleration right until the point of where they need to turn in towards the corner. As Grieger goes down through Leslie's and in towards Scotsman Corner, you can see really good long sweeping lines like you need to do on these bikes to keep the corner speed up. Callum Grieger, he's a local man, he comes from a, a very good racing family. As you come over the top again, you can see that fading just by breaking about just that little bit as you go up the back straight there and towards Clark Corner. Yeah, it looks like Max Alexander again has stretched that lead out just a little bit, but just looking towards the time screen, Duncan, the last time through there was a tenth of a second difference if you look at the 79 machine there. Yep, 79 machine, which is which is great to see the one on screen. Ashley Robson there, the, the Formula 125, and she's getting chased hard by Betty Polanski, and Polanski has really got it together, hasn't she? Because, well, remember last year she was getting a couple of laps and she was getting black flags, so we're just trying to get her up to speed, but Betty Polanski really getting on song with the Formula 125 or brilliant. Yeah, getting used to the thing and, and getting quicker and quicker every time out like to see people progressing, but the amount of progress you made is really impressive. Then Ashley Robson doing a good job just keeping in front of uh, Bethany Plants at the moment. Beat that bike through lessons there, Max Alexander. And absolutely, he's, I would say he's aggressive and positive with everything that he does. Don't he's, he's throwing it down, he's, he's hard on the brakes, he, he's changing it through and just watch him up. Well, look over the shoulder there. He's wondering if Carl Rieger is still with him because he must know that he is pushing extremely hard. And as he manages to drop Carl Rieger, yes is the answer. Very, very eeksy peeksy lap times and it's just maybe half a tenth a lap away from each other. So Carl Rieger trying to hang in there. Max Alexander trying extremely hard. Yep, for sure as we look back at Bethany Polanski chasing down Ashley Robson. And uh, I've got to say, Ashley Robson looks uh, really good out there, but um, we'll kind of really complimentary towards Ashley Robson how she was getting on last year in this particular class but to see Bethany Blasky like you say you've always said nothing come from where she was to be up to this kind of speed and pace is really positive for going forward in the future up the back straight the 125 is going that is the actual battle for the lead in the 125s but just look at the speed of that little Kawasaki as he goes through there Max Alexander back out of Scotsman Corner gets himself right tucked in the, the, the head's down behind the, the clock here as he comes up to the chicane again flicks it left flicks it right and over the top he goes and away up the back straight no look over the shoulder this time because he's got to focus because he's got a back marker in front of him yeah that's your time McIntosh there you can see that's one of the other ninjas out there on the circuit and he's out there for the first time today on that ninja so doing a good job there Ty McIntosh getting uh, used to that bike there uh, but as you race it's already getting up and to be fair Max Alexander Caught it in the right spot, never got held up, and it's probably made it a little bit hard for Callum as well. <laughs> Ashley Robson getting the, getting the blunt end of it there, but trying to go through mid, say it curves here, and does get passed on Jordan Gill there. Betty Polanski, I'm pretty sure, would have followed suit in towards Scotsman, but look at the gap come down. Has the gap come down? Yes, it has. And the pit boards, if there was a pit board, to be telling Max Alexander that here he comes, number 99, goes past Ty McIntosh. So the last lap of asking, has Callum Gregor got something stored up his RST leather sleeves? Can he make this count a 101 flat for Gregor on the last lap? And down is Alexander! Max Alexander can't believe it! He's
He's sitting in the gravel trap looking and wondering what has gone wrong. And down there's a ninja lying on his side. And that's at the chicane. And you can just see it on board from Rory Skinner there. As Rory Skinner's about to take second place. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened with Max Alexander there inside. It looked like Max be actually sitting in the gravel trap there for, for the split second. But that's handed it to Callum Gregor. And Max Alexander, you could see how hard he was pushing. He was trying really, really hard throughout this thing. Um, just cut caught out there last lap, but just had to take it nice and steady. The worst he would have been was second, but he definitely had the advantage over Callum and stuck that nice. Richard was all back for the person for second place. And will Rory Skinner be able to hold it to the line ahead of Thomas Lodge? Rory Skinner, can we see him coming over the line? But they had never mind that. Callum Gregor put a charge on towards the end. He put the pressure on Max Alexander. But Rory Skinner does get second place. Callum, a fine win. Um, I'm not going to say gifted, but uh, putting pressure on the leader and then uh, Max crashed. Yeah, unfortunately, Max crashed, yeah, just made a little mistake at the hairpin, which allowed me to catch up, and then we went into the chicane, and we just put a little bit too much pressure on the front, and the front just slid away from him, but I just hope he's all right, and we get in the next race. Rory, our 11-year-old record-breaking youngest ever rider, and the first podium as well, historic moment. Yeah. Happy enough with the race? Yeah, it was catching Thomas towards the end, the last two laps just pushed my hardest, and I got past him in the end. And a third place man, uh, the accident there obviously helped at the end to get you up onto the podium. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously, um, luckily that, well, unfortunate for Max, but luckily for me, uh, just gifted me a podium, really, so, yeah, happy with that. So, with the one, two, five, Gregor from Skinner and Lodge, Ashley Robson gets up in the fourth place, first of the former one, two, fives in the road there, with a great race with Bethany Polanski, Shipper Lee McIntosh and Lindsay Holm in eighth position. In the 125 points, that's Rudy Skinner commanding from Archie Robson. The Beth Polanski up in the third place. Jilly McGall, who we didn't see here this weekend in fourth, with Jordan Gill, Shipper Lee, and Lewis Patterson down in seventh position.